Welcome to episode 3 of Mazda Miata Fan. We're going to be taking a look at how to change out the transmission and shifter oil on a 5-speed manual transmission Miata. Parts and tools for the job include 75W90 gear oil, an oil pump, a crescent wrench, 24mm wrench, penetrant, 10mm socket and ratchet, medicine droppers, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a clear or plastic cup. Now jacking the Miata safely is the most important part of this process. Be sure to refer to your owner's manual for specific safety instructions. Take your Miata for a drive and warm it up completely. Then park it, jack it up safely, and then look underneath the car as indicated by this yellow arrow behind the driver's side wheel. This is where you'll find the fill and drain plugs. Be careful, everything is hot. In this shot you can actually see both. You can see the drain plug, the manual transmission right here, and you can see the fill plug right here. So they are in a reasonable proximity to one another. So again with the spotlight on the drain, and the spotlight on the fill. I'm going to go ahead and spray your penetrant. Of course, we've got plenty of that deep creep left over from the sea foaming project. Let's soak into the fill. And we'll let it soak into the drain. Okay, now that the penetrant has soaked in, you're going to need a 24 millimeter wrench in order to remove the drain plug and the fill plug is just a square head so you could probably use really any crescent wrench or any appropriate wrench to fit that square plug which again is right here now remember again remove the, the fill plug before you remove the drain plug one the, the airflow will aid in the draining of the fluid and two if you can't get that fill plug out for any reason you're going to be disappointed when you don't have any oil in your transmission. Okay, now it's time to remove the drain plug. Now I've already sprayed, sprayed that penetrant in and I've also found that if you don't have the 24 millimeter wrench you can use a 15 16 wrench and uh, accomplish the same thing. Now I've also added a pail underneath to catch the draining transmission fluid. So again you loosen the drain plug. I would keep your hands free of that drain plug and resist the temptation to loosen it by hand because as we've talked about earlier We've actually taken the car for a test or for a warm-up drive, and I don't want to put my hand in this oil until we know for sure that everything has cooled down to a safe level. The remainder of the car, the, uh, the uh, exhaust and so forth, feels relatively cool, but we're not going to take any chances with our personal safety. And again, remember, some of these things will go a little quicker than than I'm doing them here, because you'll be not required to use the camera and so forth. Alright, so that's a good sign. There is some transmission fluid in there. It's pretty brown and nasty, but we've got it. So that's a good sign. Okay, once you get the drain plug out and all the oil drain, take a look at the tip of your drain plug. It is magnetic and it is meant to catch the little tiny pieces of metal that the transmission shaves off as the metal pieces touch each other throughout the course of use. This one looks pretty good, so I think the transmission is probably in fairly good shape. I haven't had any clutch slippage, any grinding, any unusual noises otherwise, so I I'm, I'm suspect that the wear of the transmission is probably pretty good. But remember to take a look and remember to clean this plug and inspect this washer that's attached to it and make sure that washer's in good shape. If it's not, be sure to replace it. Okay, so now I've, I've taken that 
drain plug and uh, cleaned it with purple cleaner thoroughly. Ah, uh, look how it glistens and gleams in the sun. But remember, do, do your car a favor. Anytime you take something like a screw or a spark plug or any of those things that are threaded and screwed into the car, make sure to treat those threads with some anti-seize before you put it back in. Now you don't have to go crazy with this stuff, but you do want to put enough on it that it adequately seats in each of the threads. Okay, we're back under the car. We've cleaned the drain plug. We have put the anti-seize compound on the threads and replaced or uh, put the washer back on the drain plug. So now it's time to put the drain plug back into the drain hole. Now remember, always tighten things by hand before you tighten them with tools so that you can avoid the possibility of cross-threading. Get your torque wrench and be prepared to set it to 29 to 43 foot-pounds of torque. Now my torque wrench is in inches, so I've done some conversion. 29 foot-pounds is 348 inch-pounds. So I've set my torque wrench to an even 360 inch-pounds of torque. So you want to tighten until you get those clicks and that resistance from your torque wrench. And you know it's tight. Okay, time to put the mobile one in. Get that oil pump and attach it to your quart size quart size oil bottle and we'll be pumping the oil in under the car. Okay, so you feed that oil pump line up into your fill hole and make sure it's securely in place and pump in the oil. It should take approximately two quarts. I've, I've read that 1.8 is a max in some and 2.1 is a max for others so we're gonna see how we do here and you will know you have reached capacity when it starts to seep out of that fill hole that's we're only on quart number one so it's going to take two full quarts to accomplish this okay there comes that drainage it actually took a little closer to almost two and a half quarts and it may have just been because I did a substantial job of draining it first and um, also you'll have a little bit of leftover in each one of those um, each one of those quarts and some spillage and some other things that will account for it so it took a little more than that 2.1 but there it is it is filled up And that, that seeping that comes out of the fill hole will tell you that you're full. Okay, don't forget to clean the fill plug and put the anti-seize on the threads. Hand tighten that fill plug in before you put any tools on it. Okay, and remember to tighten that fill plug to the recommended torque specification. Now, I cannot get the torque wrench to fit that square bolt, so I am going to give it my best guess. But we'll tighten it until it's about as tight as it's comfortable and in about a quarter turn, and that should make it good and tight. I would recommend prior to calling the job underneath the car done, just get some degreaser and clean up all of this oil one it'll smell bad and two it's a good opportunity while you got the car lifted up to go ahead and clean the underside which is not something that you do with this much care and precision that often so this is a great time to knock that out okay now that the fill plug is good and tight the heavy lifting for the transmission is done okay now that you're done with the underside of the car the next step is to take out the center console so that you can get to the lubrication of the shifter. You're going to take out the center console. You'll need to remove, first of all, three screws. Phillips head.
There are also two screws at each side of the edges that need to be removed. Okay, next step is to remove your shift knob. Just twist it counterclockwise, it'll come right off. Okay, these bolts are 10 millimeter in size. And of course, just give them a good counterclockwise turn and they'll start to work their way out. Those bolts out, remove the large shift boot. Remember the small shift boot was torn, but remove the large shift boot and it will reveal the three bolts that hold in the shifter. They are again 10 millimeter and loosen them with your ratchet. Okay, as I'm finishing up with this third bolt, what I wanted to show you was don't, don't loosen them all the way with the ratchet. Loosen them part of the way and then complete loosening them by hand. The reason I suggest that is that way you're not dropping these very difficult to find bolts down in the transmission or down to the car or down to the ground. In any of those cases you'll be fishing and you don't want to do that. So just finish removing those bolts by hand. At that point you can remove the shifter. And there's the remainder of the oil we want to replace. So we want to get that oil out and put fresh oil in. You can use one of these typical medicine droppers that you would get at, say, Walgreens or Walmart or any of those places that are pharmacies. And uh, you can use it to extract the old fluid out of the chamber so that you can dispose of it. So once I've sucked all the fluid out, we'll use the same thing once it's cleaned out to put the new fluid in. Ah, nice clean fluid. So we're going to put 90 cc's or 90 milliliters worth of this fluid into your transmission shifter. Okay, so our measuring device is set up for 5 milliliters at a pop. So we're going to do this 18 times because 18 times 5 is 90. Okay. Put it down in there. Shoot it in and repeat 17 more times. Okay, 90 cc's or 90 milliliters of the Mobile One 75W90 gear oil. And as you can see, it filled up as I anticipated right up to the top. And you remember earlier it was not filled to the top. So we should have also improved protection and shifting at this point. So we are going to reverse this process and reassemble everything couple of quick tips as you reassemble that shifter remember put those locking bolts back in by hand and be very cautious so that you do not drop them into the transmission anywhere remember to pay attention to things like this little metal grounding clip here it was on the outside of the boot not the inside and remember as you line things back up Push the base of the center console in through your gas and trunk release first. Then lay it back down on your shifter. Okay, now that the job's all done, let's go take her for a test drive and see how it turned out. Shifting smoother and better than ever. Thanks for tuning in to episode 3 of Mazda Miata Fan. See you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.